Are you ready for the review of WrestleMania Night 2? I hope so, because I've got YouTube's The Botch Guy joining me to talk about everything that happened on Night 2 of WrestleMania, including Roman Reigns retaining the Universal Championship, a really disappointing Fiend versus Randy Orton match, and of course, everything in between. Let's get everything going right now. Welcome to the WWE Podcast. Your number one source for the latest in WWE news and straightforward analysis. Are you ready to get this thing going? Give me a hell yeah! I said give me a hell yeah! Then let's get this show started right now. Oh yes, WrestleMania. WrestleMania, guys, is now over. WrestleMania is... In the books for 2021, WrestleMania 37 has now concluded, and we are rolling into the WrestleMania hangover week as WrestleMania Backlash is actually the next pay-per-view in five weeks, I believe in the middle of May, May 16th or something around that time. But there is a ton to get to regarding night two of WrestleMania, starting with Randy Orton and The Fiend. Uh, What the F was going on there? The Women's Tag Team Championship match with Natalya and Tamina versus Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Riddle versus Sheamus for the Intercontinental Championship. And yes, of course, the main event of uh, Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, and Edge in the Triple Threat for the Universal Championship. Obviously, we saw that uh, Roman Reigns did retain, and we're going to give our thoughts on that and so much more. Um, and you guys are you're not going to want to miss this one because we've got some very, very opinionated thoughts on the Randy Orton and the Fiend uh, deal and what's going on. I, I know many of you and myself were not happy with what happened here, given the you know four month build is paid off in a single RKO in a regular normal wrestling match. It makes you know less than zero cents. But uh, before we get going, guys, head on over to YouTube. Subscribe to The Botch Guy. He does so many damn videos that are so great. I mean, they're only a minute to two minutes long, so you don't have to dedicate a bunch of time. He covered so many funny things that happened and serious things that happened at WrestleMania. He even did almost a two-hour live stream covering the weather uh, today for WrestleMania. And it's just all around a very entertaining and easy to watch channel on YouTube. And he's trying to get to 70,000 followers or 70,000 subscribers rather. So uh, help him out, head on over to YouTube, look for the botch guy and hit that subscribe button. And uh, that's the best way to support him on the, on his channel. So last thing here, guys, before we get going, if you want an ad free experience and a whole lot more great perks, head over to Patreon slash WWE, patreon.com slash WWE podcast. <clears throat> they also have a, an app for Patreon or uh, just use the web browser, search for us, and you get no ads or anything like that. It's very streamlined. And again, a ton more goodies are coming there. I'm still working on developing, uh, really revamping the thing. Uh, no, I'm not increasing prices, okay? <laughs> I'm not increasing prices. Everything is uh, you know, remaining about the same or even coming down in some cases. So uh, I'm just going to be adding a ton more in terms of benefits over there, video and direct connection to me and uh, coming on the show, that kind of thing. All right, well, let's uh, let's just get to it, right? That's what you're here for. You're here to listen about WrestleMania, our thoughts and review on night two of WrestleMania. Uh, I think you'll be highly entertained by this the, by this review by YouTube's the Botch Guy and myself. Uh, but just a little bit of a disclaimer: uh, we didn't do a live review show simply because number one, the audio wasn't great coming off Blog Talk Radio, and some people were complaining about the audio on uh, night one. You can't skip forward, and I I also experienced that, but I really have no clue. Uh, what is up with the audio that I, I looked on my end? I'm not sure, but um, it's there. You just kind of kind of let it play out. The skip button, it, it hates the skip button. I don't know why. I didn't even know that that's possible, but uh, this should be much better in terms of audio quality and there should be no issues. So let's get to it. The botch guy and myself covering night two of WrestleMania. I will be back on Tuesday night for your Monday night raw after WrestleMania 
review. Now, obviously, it won't be the same with fans not there, but uh, it'll still be Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania nonetheless. So I'm looking forward to that. And then kicking things into the WrestleMania hangover week with uh, the rest of our great co-hosts covering the, uh, the the WWE shows and AEW, for that matter, and bringing on some, uh, some co-hosts throughout the week. It's not just going to be myself. We're having a co-host almost every single show that we're doing, uh, there, or at least that I'm doing. So it's going to be a blast as we, uh, as we wrap up WrestleMania this week. But uh, boy, oh boy, you guys are going to have fun with this one. Enjoy it. And as always, I'll talk to you next time. Okay, welcome to night two. WrestleMania has concluded. It is now behind us. We are going to talk about everything that happened in night two of WrestleMania, or as they dubbed it, Sunday night WrestleMania, WrestleMania Sunday night. It's night two. We've got the Botch Guy, YouTube's The Botch Guy here to discuss everything that happened, the good, the bad, the indifferent, all of it. Welcome back. How's everything going, man? Hope oh, Did you enjoy WrestleMania? Aren't you aren't you sick of me yet? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I love the show. Uh, we'll we'll definitely chit chat about it. Uh, thanks for having me once again. Uh, for all the people that don't know who I am, uh, I am the botch guy on YouTube. I do a lot of comedy and uh, different type of wrestling topics on there. So if you guys uh, want to do me a big favor, I would I would highly and genuinely appreciate it and head over there and give me a sub. Uh, I promise I'll entertain you guys as best as I as i can man thanks again matt for having me it's gonna be a good show absolutely and uh guys you will do yourself a favor by going and subscribing over on youtube you will um it's been really a blast to watch you throughout the wrestlemania weekend and doing weather report updates and everything else oh, it, i mean it was like almost a two-hour stream today yeah, yeah so if for people that don't know uh <laughs> i'm not sure you probably went on some people probably went on youtube realizing oh there's some there's some idiot doing the weather reports for uh wrestlemania well I did it yesterday, and there was like almost 900 to 1,000 people on it. And then uh, I did another stream today, and there was like four or 500 people. Like, I, could, I can't believe weather reports were, were so popular. But, uh, yes, I, w- I was the, the guy with doing the weather reports on my channel, which was super hilarious. I bet you'd never imagine when you started a wrestling channel that you'd actually be doing weather reports as part of your <laughs> duty. So that's, that, that's great. Um, I, I didn't yeah. know I was going to do a podcast with such a celebrity like yourself either. So oh, it works oh. Out. <laughs> yes, uh, that, that's that's how people would uh, de- definitely frame me a celebrity. Yes, um, but all right. Well, I want to dive into the card here, and there's a lot to get to. We've got some really great stuff to talk about, and we have some not so great stuff to talk about. At least from my my end here, and I, you know, you don't like to be negative. I'm not a big proponent of being negative. Just be negative, but. The Randy Orton and the Fiend match that started off Raw, you know, or Raw, started off WrestleMania, had so much potential, or it had so many question marks behind it. There were no stipulations. The match was essentially built for the better part of four months when he lit the Fiend on fire. The Fiend came back, and uh, he was not in his burnt skin suit, which I understand why, because it probably couldn't be an outfit he could wrestle in. You know, it was probably not wrestling friendly. And uh, so he was reborn as they showed us that graphic of him being reborn. So I get it. His mask was slightly tweaked. He had a new uh, vest on. So there were some alterations, but I was sad that the burned fiend look went away. Um, but that aside, uh, what did you think about this match? Were you underwhelmed? Do you, do you see what the hell's going on? Alexa Bliss gets involved at the end. What, what's going on? Yeah, so j- just like you said, I, I don't like being negative too often. But guess what? I'm going to be negative. Uh, I'm going to be really negative. That was complete garbage, um, what, what I just saw. like uh, let's Okay, so let's start with the good, the positives. Uh, the very beginning, I love the entrance. Uh, like when he came through the little uh, – kind of reminded me of the, the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> with, with with that little interest they had there and he comes out and he kind of transforms himself into the thing i thought it was a cool idea i i definitely enjoyed that i was marking out during like even the box and popping out of the box like i'm i'm a sucker for like supernatural stuff like that i thought alexa bliss was great at that time and then the match started and <laughs> what can i possibly say about the match it was it was it was an embarrassment um they they had some good ideas, but they didn't like it. It was just the same fiend match where he no sells everything, which is fine. I'm okay with that. I've never like I'm okay with that. But you have to have some sort of proper storyline. And basically, all they did was fast forward to Alexa Bliss after like what three minutes, four minutes, and then she's just kind of standing there. 
and the fiend takes one RKO and loses. And I'm the, if you guys go to my channel and look at my reaction, I did a reaction for it. Like I'm, I went through five stages of like different emotions. Like I went from angry, sad, like I was confused, I was indifferent, and then they turned off the lights, and I thought, oh, they're gonna do something, right? Like oh, mm -hmm. it was just like a trick, yep. right? Who cares about the finish because you know whatever. Well, no, they didn't do anything. The, the fans were all booing. The fans were really pissed off. Um, I was upset. Uh, I, I did get over it. Um, I'll tell you my theory after this, but I'm curious what you thought. Well, okay, so to to match the, the to the point where you got here for your analysis, I'll say, yeah, I'm I'm cool with the the hocus pocus when it's it makes sense and it's done in a way that's not um, you know um, B level. WWE usually does a, a very nice job with this kind of stuff, and they did. I, I I'm fine with the explanation of how he transformed from the burnt fiend back into himself. That's cool. Uh, the Jack in the Box deal is cool. It's creepy. Um, Alexa Bliss was turning it, and the music's playing. That's fine. The fiend comes out with the pentagram. Uh, symbol above him and totally all makes sense and like you said great um, the red lighting when I saw the red lighting I'm like oh okay we're going back to the red light here and that that should have been a symbolic gesture to how this match was going to play out because um, it was it was short um, it was frustrating um, it was the, the, probably one of the worst payoffs to a big long standing angle match at Wrestlemania ever um maybe it is in the top three i mean i don't know any others off the top of my head uh but this was uh as far as the first few minutes they you know the fiend no soul that what you expect and then alexa bliss does her thing and i'm i'm thinking is this sister abigail did she mimic or mock sister abigail was she just playing like she was possessed by the fiend but now she's she's just going to pull one over on the fiend. Like, by the way, I'm not actually possessed. I, I don't know. I, I was thinking of all these things. I'm thinking it has something to do with sister Abigail, which is why only one RKO did the job because sister Abigail, I think is maybe the kryptonite for the fiend. I, I can't think of any other thing that she was supposed to be representing other than sister Abigail that we've never seen, by the way. So we don't even know what she looks like. Um, but that, that's my thought. And having Randy Orton beat him, the fans are like, what the F? Like, what what's going on? You could hear that audible groan in the arena. People spend all this money getting there and people that are excited for this angle. It's over in three minutes. And by the way, the Fiend loses to one single RKO after taking, my God, pedigrees and chairs to the back. And I mean, he was unbeatable being set on fire and one RKO does it. So what do you think about that with Alexa Bliss? Okay, so I, I have a theory. Uh, so the the way I'm thinking that it's going to work here is I don't think that was The Fiend. Um, I think that was kind of like an imposter, maybe like a Bo Dallas dressing up as The Fiend. I, I don't think that was The Fiend, and I think Alexa Bliss knew that, and that's mm. why it only took one RKO because that's not The Fiend. It's never been The Fiend. The Fiend is still roasted. The Fiend is still technically dead. I I think that's what they're going to go with. I, I, I truly think that's what they're going to make it as to why he's been so weak since he came back because he's shown a lot of weakness, something that he hasn't shown before in his character. So I, I think they're, I, I honestly think this is, the, this is actually just a fake fake out by, uh, by either, I don't know the WWE or Alexa bliss, the writing staff, who knows, but I don't think the fiend is alive. I think he died with Randy Orton, man. And I'm, I'm curious how they're going to move forward with this character because he's weak now. No one cares. Like, I still care about his entrance and care about his aesthetic. But as for strength, like, he's lost his strength. Like, this is, like, he, come on. Like, one RKO. He can't be the Fiend with one RKO win. And I guess you, you said the kryptonite thing. I guess that makes sense. You know, if it's Sister Abigail. Maybe Sister Abigail controls him too, right? Maybe they can play it off like, oh, she's actually controlling him the whole time. and. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why he took one RKO because he she forced him to to lose that match or something. I don't know, man. I, yeah, we're we're reaching. We're reaching. We're, we're we, reaching we, you know. like crazy right now. <laughs> we're trying to help WWE out. We're trying to think about what they may be thinking about. It, I, the worst thing that can happen is we see this garbage that was presented to us at WrestleMania. And let's be honest, with WrestleMania, it's garbage. If, if it was on, on uh, a pay-per-view, a normal pay-per-view, a B pay-per-view, we would be pissed. And we'd be like, okay, well, hopefully this is better by WrestleMania and we get the big payoff. This felt like a crap B pay-per-view ending where you can at least look forward to something. The fact is that at WrestleMania, this 
is the end all be all. This program should be over, and it is over, I would think. But if they go on Monday Night Raw at tomorrow night, and they come out and they don't, they don't even address this, and it's just uh, maybe like a. The, the Fiend and uh, Alexa Bliss come out, and there's just a new opponent for The Fiend, and they don't really address this. That's the worst that could happen. The best that, ha- that could happen is, like you yeah. said, they pull some hocus pocus. They tell you that it really wasn't The Fiend, that The Fiend is still, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, repairing himself, whatever it may be, and they just pull the old, like you said. I, I can't think of anything else. This, and, and I don't know. I, I'm I'm pissed off. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, disappointed in WWE for this match and I, I'm glad they got it off right at the beginning and they didn't wait till the end of the show. They just were like, let's get this crap out of the way right now. So fans can, uh, you know, there's really nowhere up to go, but from, uh, up from here. So what do you think? Yeah, well, that that's why they did it at the beginning of the show because whoever wrote this is like, let's just get rid of, or let's just get rid of this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, like I truly, truly, I, I think it's it's just it's ridiculous. I, I think the, it, we have to explain it. There has to be some uh, hocus pocus stuff going on there because it just it doesn't make any logical sense. And I think that we can leave it at that. I guess. Yeah. No. It it doesn't. I mean, I could ramble on about this forever, and uh, I, I really just it's it's it makes me angry because we came off of a night that was so damn good from last night. You're on a high. You're thinking this is going to be great. You're looking forward to it. There's got to be some wacky stuff going on. They're going to have a, you know, a 15 minute back and forth or, you know, the, the fiend is going to no sell for like 10 minutes, which is what you expect. But man, this was, this just flat out pissed the fans off. It, it was, uh, it was, it was nonsense, but let's move on. And uh, to a match that's really, I don't think was nonsense. And that was the women's tag team championship match with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax defeating Natalia and Tamina. Hey, let me ask you this. Have you ever heard chance for Tamina? Have you ever heard Tamina chance in your life? No, I, but I will say this. I, I was chanting Tamina back in the day when, or not back in the day. Uh, I think it was about nine months ago when she had her, her first big push and I thought she actually looked really good. Remember that one little run she had there? Yes. And uh, I thought she looked pretty good. So, no, uh, it's very rare to see it. <laughs> That's for sure there, Matt. How did you enjoy the match, though? Did you, did you, uh, were, you, were you angry at the finish? Did you feel like uh, Natalia and Tamita should have won? What, what did you think? I, I thought the finish was fine. I, I thought the match was okay, too. Like, they had some nice headbutts trade-offs that they had. You know, they had a tandem backdrop going on there's some sling shots going on they had a couple of nice moves overall there you know they had the spine buster there was a really nice spine buster right there uh tamina made a save like I, tamina you know she looked pretty good like i thought they looked pretty decent overall I, I thought this match was a lot better than a lot of people thought it was going to be and uh my respect again just it, it keeps going up like i feel like this this women's division, I feel like they're a lot better than a lot of people think. And I think the problem is they just don't have the opportunity to really showcase themselves. Like, this is the best Tamina has ever looked in her career. And it's not even remotely close. She's obviously put in the time and the effort. And Natalia's always been technically good. She just can't find that gimmick right now, right? So, I don't know. What did you think about the match? I, I thought it was uh, – I, I think what made it really – um, special, at least as special as this could be, I guess, is the crowd was there, and the crowd was really behind, uh, particularly Tamina. And uh, I think it's a level of respect that the fans have for Tamina that was starting to come out in this match, saying, you know what, Tamina's been here for a long time. She's been in and out of storyline. She's here for a month, she's gone for six, and then she's back. Um, you know, they haven't ever really done anything solid with Tamina. At times, you always think about, hey, is she still employed? I mean, that's how, honestly how we think about Tamina. And I think the fans respect her for her tenure, her long tenure in WWE, and that longevity and uh, and, and really being suppressed on the card, I think, really really drove the fans to bring her up and say, hey, you know what? Maybe it is her time. You know, we've seen her around for a while. Let's give her a chance. And I think it was out of that respect. Same with Natalia. I enjoyed the match quality. I think it was just fine. Um, uh, Tamina certainly did show out a lot during this match. And uh, I was disappointed that the women's tag team champions are still the women's tag team champions, Nia Jackson, and Shayna Baszler. But what's great is that, they are really doing a good job overall, even though they didn't drop the belts, and I thought they would. 
the the biggest winner here is the women's tag team division that is suddenly becoming extremely competitive. I mean, out of nowhere, you have two legitimate teams, not just people that are that are thrown together just to create a team so they so they quote have a tag team division. These are they're, they're starting to develop a women's tag team division. So that that to me is the biggest win here is uh, is the, are the women's division overall. I you said it better than I could have possibly ever said it. We, let's leave it at that. Like that is that was good <laughs> stuff, man. Man, you can cut a promo recently. That's good, really nice, uh, man. For, for yeah, I'm I'm running on fumes. I mean, it's one <laughs> one a.m. here, so you're getting uh, I don't know whatever's left of my brain. It's it's just getting it all out. Um, I feel I feel you too, man. Yeah, I, the amount of work we've been putting in God. is is kind of crazy. Once once Tuesday hits, oh, uh, I'm you know, yeah, I know there's <laughs> NXT there too, and I actually I think know. there's going to be some big NXT stuff coming down. But you know what? Like Wednesday and Thursday, uh, I am I am having the most relaxation session that I yeah, can possibly yes. have. I don't care. Take a day, if man. I have to go buy a hot spring for uh, and, a couple hundred. And that's bucks, the so. thing. No, please do. I, I may do the same thing. Take off work. Or I may take off work. I don't know yet. But people don't understand. I mean, that people think that you just you just uh, put out this content and it's super easy to do and it just takes no time. And whether you're doing what you do on YouTube or you're doing a podcast, that all the wrestling podcasters out there, all the wrestling YouTubers out there, all of us can agree it is not easy. It is it is um it's a labor of love. We love it. We're not complaining, but man, it takes a drain on you, especially pay per view weekends and much less a wrestling pay per view, a WrestleMania yeah. pay per view. So yeah, we love yeah. we love doing what we're doing. Don't get us wrong, but yeah. like it's just like any other do- job. If you have some big event about to happen. It's it's it can get quite stressful and you don't know how it's gonna go. Like you have your amazing podcast radio and you don't know how your hits are gonna go. You just hope hope for the best and obviously things have been going really well and even with my YouTube channel, the Botch Guy, like I I I don't know how it's gonna go. Like one video sometimes does awful and the other video does amazing and it's it's you don't really know until you kind of put in the work and see, right? Mm-hmm. It's very unpredictable, right? And, and those mysterious YouTube algorithms, yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> just, the, the, they would drive you nuts. Legendary. <laughs> I, you should have seen my old stuff. I used to drop an F-bomb on, like, every video, uh, and then I'm like, oh, I realize I can't do that anymore, or else <laughs> they're not going to pay me ad money. And yeah, the ad tough. revenue, gone. It's hard, yeah. to, hard to put a roof over my head when I'm not getting paid for it, too, right? So yeah, exactly. Um, all right. Well, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn is up next here with Logan Paul. Now, I saw the video you cut. With uh, Logan Paul being stunned by Kevin Owens, probably <laughs> if if you're talking about a moment where the fans wanted it the most, oh my God, the the fans were like hated Logan Paul. I mean, <laughs> Logan Paul was the maybe the top heel of the night, uh, well one of them anyway, and just uh, they were begging, anger, just just frothing at the mouth to get a stunner out of Kevin Owens, and they did deliver it, which is probably the most memorable part of this, sadly, even though Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, I think, did a very nice job. They've, they've wrestled hundreds of times, literally, as Kevin Owens has pointed out. I thought they did very well uh, with one another. Did you expect anything less? No. Uh, Kevin Owens ends up beating Sami Zayn. Uh, w- what does this mean for Kevin Owens' career? Probably not a whole lot. Same with Sami Zayn. I think Sami Zayn losing made sense because it feeds into his conspiracy theories that he's got uh, you know his whole gimmick is, and and so really it's it's a win for Kevin Owens. It's also a win for Sami Zayn because it feeds into his gimmick. So what did you think about this and the stunner to Logan Paul? Well, the stunner, like you said, is because people hate him. I, I don't think it was that at all. I thought it was just people wanted. They knew they wanted a stunner, right? And then, and Kevin Owens was kind of hanging around, and the anticipation was building more than anything. I think people were like, I just want to see the damn, uh, you know, the <laughs> the stunner being done on Logan Paul. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think if it was like, if it was any other celebrity, I think people would be reacting similarly. Uh, because like, again, like it's exciting when you see, like, you know, when you're anticipating something, right. Mm-hmm. And at the whole time I was saying, I was like, Oh, come on, where's this stutter? It's going to happen. Like they're really building it. Like it was a good 35, yes. 40 seconds of build. Oh. And then the stunner came and it was very satisfying. And, uh, Logan Paul, man, like I don't like I said, I don't know much too much about the guy. I know he's the Pokemon guy recently, but you know, I, I will say this, uh, man, he sold that stunner amazingly. The front flip, the front flip, oh, yeah, the front <laughs> flip, like he he must have practiced that. That was pretty good. Um, actually, all the celebrities really did a great job uh, throughout this this entire WrestleMania, except maybe the brutality singer. But uh, we'll get oh to god, that. We'll get oh to well, that. yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Uh, 
I Good think it's an audio problem. It has to have been. There, there, there had to have been an audio problem. But yes. as for the match, um, I thought it was an awesome, incredibly high chemistry match. I, I, I thought they obviously knew each other. They fought each other a million times, and you could see uh, there was a few times I thought Sammy was going to win. Uh, I, I just, you know, we can talk about all the different counters and suplexes and stuff they did, but at the end of the day, we, we've seen a lot of what they did together before. But it was so refreshing just to see these two guys go all out. And they did put on a hell of a match. The crowd was into it. They were chanting, this is awesome. And the crowd was really going into it. And, of course, the ending with the Logan Paul was great. And the ending of the match was nice. I, I, I It sucks that you know he didn't jump off the pirate ship. I know people are going to ask him about that. <laughs> but uh, I, I will say this. I, I quite enjoyed this match. Another really good match at WrestleMania. And it's becoming a bit of a pattern, my friend. It is, and you know, like th- this is a, a match that really is a perfect example of how this WrestleMania went. Just very good. I think it was very good in terms of looking at this WrestleMania as a whole. Even though, as we talked off air, that this is the first WrestleMania I can remember that there was no big returns. There was no big like WrestleMania iconic forever moments. Yes, we had great moments with Bianca Belair and others. No question about it. Those are huge. But I'm talking those massive returns like a rock or a cena or a lesnar i mean let's be honest those are those are household names and we didn't get any of that we didn't have any of that but am i sad that we didn't No, because eventually we're gonna have to move on from that era we're gonna have to evolve into understanding that this is the roster we can't rely on and go to the well every wrestlemania to pull out an austin or whoever is i love a stunner as much as the next guy but um did, were, did you feel like this wrestle Mania was lacking in that department, or are you okay? Are are you okay moving on from needing and wanting those type of moments? Well, it matters. Like if it's Becky Lynch returning, I think that would be just as big as a return than a lot of those legends, except for maybe like a, The Rock or something. Um, I, I will say this: this this WrestleMania was so good. Like just they. All the wrestlers really went out and put on an incredible show. And when, when you have a WrestleMania this good and, and performed this well, it, it really goes to show that even though there wasn't that big, crazy return moment, it was still very enjoyable. And I don't think anybody – I don't think one person is going to go away from this pay-per-view, uh, either night one or night two, if you pay tickets or even whatever, watch it on the network or Peacock or whatever – I don't think there's one person that said, you know what, this is garbage. It was bad, and I don't. It wasn't a good WrestleMania. I think it was just a very solid WrestleMania. And I think when when you have good WrestleManias and you don't have those crazy big moments, I think it's perfectly fine. And I, I have a a weird feeling there's going to be some crazy big moments tomorrow. Uh, I, I just it's it's happening for sure, no doubt about it. Even though fans won't actually be there, which will be sad, we're back in the critically acclaimed and award winning Thunderdome. Uh, we're not going to have live people there, at least for the yeah. for the short term. You know, it, it's kind of a tease that fans are back. Yeah, I will say yeah. this, Matt. Yep. Sort of interrupt. I will say I will say this. Uh, that's that's it, right? Isn't that the biggest biggest bummer? Like if. If they're if okay, so if they go tomorrow and they do have this big return of a Lesnar or, or a Becky or you know something something completely unexpected or The Rock or whatever, that's not going to happen now for sure. But like if, if any of those things happened, man, like can you imagine if they just did it the night before? Like I understand it's supposed to be the finish and Raw is supposed to be the beginning, but like there's fans there, right? And that, it, it does make me think. Well, you know, I'm thinking there's going to be a big return, but at the same time, like, why would they do it with in, not in front of a fan? Do they want to control the mm-hmm. the reaction? I guess. Like, who who knows, right? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And like you said, if, if that happens, you, you are. You're going to say, well, what the hell? Why wouldn't you have rewarded the fans that are there? Give them the live in-person pop. Um, I mean, who knows? It's I, I don't know. I, I hope that. The fans in attendance got their money's worth. I think they did. And what made this WrestleMania, as you said, it was really good, very good, uh, is not necessarily the storylines going in, because I think the build on a lot of the stories were lackluster or, or just like a joke. But what made it really good were, was the effort by all everyone i mean the effort on everyone's parts and the execution of the matches made you forget 
for some of these, how bad the build was. Uh, I mean, for example, Strowman and Shane McMahon, Bad Bunny's match, all those. I mean, I really despised the buildups for those two, two particular matches, and I came away thinking you know, positively yeah. about them. So it goes to show you that the wrestlers can overcome a lot of garbage buildup because the fans forget about it when you get in the ring. And if you just tell your story in the ring, I think that overrides a lot of the garbage that can precede it. So um, I don't know. All right. Uh, any thoughts before we move on to the next match? No, I, that's good because I really want to talk about this riddle Sheamus match. Yes, wow. That's what's wow, next. Wow, wow, wow. So take it away. Just I've, – I've said this on here before. I've said it on my channel. I've said it everywhere. You know, Sheamus right now is doing the best he's been in his entire career. He is absolutely spectacular. The, the work he's putting in – like clearly he got rewarded here. Like this is – this is this is because of the work. This is because of the hard work. I think Vince McMahon is just a big Sheamus guy, and after seeing him put in the work, I think he said, "You know what? It's time to give him something else here because it, he's just he's been unbelievable." And he just had another really good match with Riddle, who as well performed extremely well. These guys have some very nice chemistry together. There is this massive belly to belly suplex. Matt Riddle hit a jackhammer yes. in the middle of the match. And if I didn't have so many videos, that would have been a video for sure. If it was on Raw and SmackDown, for example, because, uh, well, it's harder to show actual video when it's a pay-per-view. But, you know, I, I thought there's just great, great offense, both matches. I know there was a little bit of a botch, uh, you know, during the match. They're trying to set up a big spot on top. But, but you know, Sheamus is so smart. Like, he played it off really well and ha had a nice little move there. And then, of course, the mid-air, you know, variety bro kick Oof. that like broke Riddle's face and he's bleeding everywhere was just brilliant. I, I absolutely another another really good match at WrestleMania, like WrestleMania quality match. No, no joke. You know what? They lived up to the wrestle part of WrestleMania. Like that, it's not just, it's not entertainment mania. This is WrestleMania, and that's exactly what Sheamus and Riddle did here. Sheamus, again, like you said, has been the unsung hero over the last several months now. Um, you know, I, I've always thought of him as a BB plus guy. I think he's starting to creep a little higher in my mind for whatever that's worth, which is exactly zero. But for, for <laughs> but uh, it means a lot yeah. to me, man. It means a lot to me. OK, and well, all your perfect. listeners here. Awesome. Well, um, I was really excited. I mean, well, I wasn't excited going into this necessarily. I was more excited coming out of it. And I was they got me involved in the matches they went along. And that's to me a, a telltale sign that they are doing their job by bringing me into a match that I'm kind of lukewarm about going in. Um, but it was as physical as you could have imagined it being even more than that. They were laying their stuff in. Uh, my God, there's no way to fake any of the stuff that they did with the physicality part of it. Uh, yeah, Riddle got busted. Uh, there was a botch. I didn't really care. Sheamus did a nice job of improvising. And uh, I think he like threw Riddle down or did white noise without doing it on the top rope and then just did like a knee drive into him from the top rope. Uh, he, he did a nice job of, of you know, ca uh, covering that. And the announcers did, too, where they always say, like, he couldn't quite get him up or a modified this or that. I mean, that's fine. It, it, botches are going to happen. But I loved this match. It was you talk about wrestling it's like going back to a uh, old school pro wrestling just physical it's not you know it's not really ballet here this was just bust ass and i loved it and you know congrats to sheamus i think it's more than well deserved he hasn't had a title or a title run in nearly two years so um i think he's gonna hold this and hold it for quite some time and probably have a rematch with riddle at uh what, what are they calling it wrestlemania backlash in the middle of may so is that what they're calling it yeah it's wrestlemania backlash yes not just backlash Yep. But how does that work? Because <laughs> it's the backlash from WrestleMania. But we all know that's implied. That, wait, but what, now they're is adding, that the next paper? Yes. Move? It's called WrestleMania Backlash. Not you know, Normally it's just backlash. No, no, no. They added WrestleMania to backlash as if we didn't already know that the backlash is from WrestleMania. They have to add WrestleMania to it to, I guess, squeeze as much marketing out of the WrestleMania name as possible. Yes. That's the actual name of it. Yeah, that's dumb. Uh, <laughs> WrestleMania should be WrestleMania. Like, I'm, I'm not going to call the next after Royal Rumble. I'm not going to call it the Roy the Royal Elimination Chamber, right? right? The Rumble the Elimination Chamber. It doesn't make much sense. That's silly. 
Uh, I didn't hear anything about that, but uh, obviously you're telling the truth, so I'm in shock right now. I can't believe they're calling. How, uh, that's like pure milking, you know? <laughs> like yes, that's just that's like come on, come on, Vince. Like it, come it, on. It, oh no, no, no. And, and I just confirmed it uh, just to make sure I didn't he- mishear it, but I was. I was watching them like, no, that can't be. And they said it again. So, guys, it, it is. You just search WrestleMania Backlash, and it says that it is a, a, a pay-per-view t- a scheduled to take place on May 16, 2021 from the WWE Thunderdome uh, in the Ying, Yingling Center in Tampa, Florida. So it is truly called WWE. Uh, or it's WrestleMania Backlash. So hopefully it, they just shorten it. it but Is it going to be in front of fans? or No. They said the Thunderdome. So, nope. Back to the, back to the screen boards. So, yeah, I know. WrestleMania backlash. Okay. Womp womp. All right. Womp yeah. womp. That's, that's, yeah. that's all we can say about that. I all guess. right. Uh, anything else on the on this match? Or are you ready nope. to move on? Nope, that was good, man. I, I, I just, I feel like both guys are, like, maybe they really did a good job. I, like, there's so many characters I'm interested in. Like, even the next one we're going to be talking about. Like, this is another good one. Uh, yeah. Um, what is that next match? Because I my screen just went blank. What is the next big, match? Big Big E versus Apollo there Cruz in the Nigerian uh, street fight. I'm calling it because that's all, it was. That's I know it's the drum fight, but it was basically it was, the yeah the street fight. Well, you you go ahead while I get myself repositioned here, refresh the screen. What'd you think about the match? I thought it was another really good match at WrestleMania. Like once again, Big E and Apollo Cruz pulled out all the stops. Like. I don't know what's going on with this WrestleMania. I don't I don't like I don't feel like there was really one terrible match except for maybe the Fiend match, but like, you know, he the Big E went with the candlesticks, they were wearing on the ribs of, you know, Apollo Crews there, a lot of retaliation going on. You know, they he tried to drop the steps on Big E, which is a good kind of reference from earlier in the storyline. It made a lot of sense. Uh they had that Urinage suplex. You know, from the ring apron there, I think that was really, really nice. You know, they had the Big E hit the big ending. You know, it was kind of a good way to retain the title. But then, you know, Dabakato comes out of nowhere, you know, straight from the the Raw Underground. <laughs> you know, he <laughs> comes out and now all of a sudden he's like this, like he kind of looks like, you know, like, I don't know. Like, you know, like those big military, like. Guys from like uh, I don't know, like I don't know how to even pronounce it, but like he looks like a big military guy, and uh, I guess he's like probably is going to be one of his cousin or brother, or probably something or some some sort of supporter of, you know, of of Apollo there. So I'm I'm curious how the storyline's going to go, and Apollo wins, and uh, you know it's it's nice to see Apollo with the title. Where does Big E go from here? Like. I guess a rematch, right? At, at, at WrestleMania Backlash, it's, I, I guess they should have called it WrestleMania Rematch, right? Because like every single match is going to be a rematch at at WrestleMania this year, or right? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what they're going to do. I mean, I would say I would venture to guess at least three quarters of the matches are going to be some type of variation of what we saw at WrestleMania. I mean, you don't put the word WrestleMania on top of a pay-per-view unless it has a direct correlation to the matches we've just seen now. Uh, yeah, this is, again, but as far as this match goes, um, I it, this was a, 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 it was a weird, weird way to, to set up basically a street fight. I mean, they didn't even really use the drums that much. The, this was, yeah. you know, it, it was like a kendo stick fight at the beginning, and they're whacking each other with it. I, I would do away with kendo sticks. I think they're like wildly overused in wrestling. Uh, but I, I it did. Hurt. Yeah. Oh God. I, I'm not saying no, no, no. They, they, they hurt was, like hell. Yeah. But, and yeah. you know what? Like I, I tell my wife, like I'm like, okay, I get it's fake and scripted. I get thing, but like whenever there's kendo sticks, like I want you to like just look at their look at their bodies after the match. Like they're always destroyed, right? So yeah. No, they are and. You know, it's funny when you mentioned Dabakato. Well, apparently Corey Graves and Michael Cole had no idea who he was because they were saying, like, they're like, who is this guy? Even WWE's <laughs> Twitter account. Go look at it. It says, it literally said, who is this guy? And they have footage of what he did. And I'm like, do you, are we are we all supposed to play dumb? I, I guess what they're doing is just rebranding his name and pretending that Dabakato didn't exist in Raw Underground. So... They yeah, are, exactly are playing it. Doing. Yeah, yeah, they're going to re- give him a new name, and they don't yeah. want us to remember he's Dabakato. So uh, get, look out for that. But as far as this match goes, yeah, they beat the hell out of each other. Uh, I think it was the right move to have Apollo win. Yes, Big E had the match won, but with uh, we'll call him Dabakato. Uh, Dabakato comes out and uh, spoils the match for Big E. Apollo is going to go on, I think, a really nice run here as champion. And as I said last night on our show, 
I don't think this is a bad thing for Big E. He had the match won. He's not hurt by this at all. In fact, I think he's elevated. He has uh, somebody to still continue to shoot for. He's probably going to get an, a rematch for the IC title at WrestleMania Backlash. God, I hate saying that already. Um, and just don't. I, I, I'll just say Backlash. <laughs> I'm just going to say effing Backlash because th- there's no such thing as WrestleMania Backlash. So, uh, But it, my, my final point is, though, is I, I think that this is going to be a really good thing for Big E because once he loses the rematch at Backlash – in a month, then he can move on to bigger and better things. Um, I think that him losing the IC title may not be the worst thing ever uh, for his career. And I love what Apollo is doing right now. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, the drum fight, like how many mm. times did they actually use the drum? Honestly, I don't know. Never. I, I counted never one at the beginning, right? Oh, did they? they? I, I must've missed or it. Maybe he dropped the, be- the drum. And then it went boom, like uh, it's a drum fight. Like, <laughs> wouldn't you, shouldn't you? I don't know. Use the, you know, use the drums. <laughs> it I, seems pretty logical. I, uh, I mean, I it, like, it looked right? like a, a symphony of destruction match that uh, have been used several times in WWE. I'm like, that's basically what this is. I'm like, this is a street fight uh, with drums that you're not using. Uh, I don't know. It was bizarre. So it's bizarre. Yeah, I Very don't know. Bizarre match. Uh, but again, I thought it was a good match, and Dabakato looked pretty pretty strong. I thought he looked fine. Mm-hmm. I, I guess he's not going to be called Dabakato now, right? He's no. probably going to be called something else. I, I, he'll be given his Nigerian name. I don't know what that is. Well, uh, I don't even want to guess. I'm gonna, that's, no. why, that's how you get cancel cultured, my yeah, friend. Yeah. No, and, no, no, uh... no. I'm not even going to guess. <laughs> I'm not even going to guess because I'll mispronounce it or offend don't or say it. something don't wrong. Do no, it. it's a trick. I, it'll just be a Nigerian-based name, a very respectful Nigerian-based yes, name. Right. That's all I know. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I want to move on to... <laughs> uh, and, and I want to move on to Oscar and Rhea Ripley, and uh, you have some some uh, some comments about uh, Rhea Ripley's entrance music or the, the the band that was playing for her. So go ahead. What happened? <laughs> what what happened to the like? Okay, so the obviously, if you guys like, okay, I don't I don't know this lady. I'm sure she is an immensely talented lady, and I think Rhea Ripley has one of the best entrance songs, like. Literally in the WWE, it always hypes me up. I don't know what happened, but it sounded just so disappointing. Like, I think there was audio technical issues. Like, there had to have been because, like, she was screaming into the microphone and not singing. Like, she was just screaming into it, and none of the reverb or anything was going on. So she just she was just screaming the song, mm-hmm. and that's what it came off of. And I even I even saw Rhea Ripley laugh at one point. Uh, when she was near the near the end, and I don't know if she was laughing at that or laughing at something else, but I, I feel deep down she was laughing at it uh, because it really was kind of silly. But no, it was it was not the best. Uh, li- I never want to hear that song live ever again. No, nope. like never ever in my entire life do I ever want to hear that thing live again. And no offense to the lady, I'm sure she's immensely talented. It's just. Whatever that was, I just I'm I'm not I'm not down for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, as for the match, what did you what did you? Oh, first of all, what well, did you yeah. think about the entrance there, and what did you think about the match? Well, the for the entrance, I'm kind of with you. When uh, she was screaming, and then the the camera guy comes up to her, and the camera mic is picking up what she's saying, but you can tell that the stadium isn't hearing what she's saying and scream. I'm like, oh no! I mean, like it, it did not sound good. Um, I, I'm not a fan of uh, of this band, although I, I like her entrance music. I don't know this band's like you know I, I don't know their, uh, yeah, either, their their right. albums. I don't I don't know anything other than hey, it's Rhea Ripley's entrance music, and uh, so I mean it's whatever. Like I don't I don't I don't like this. Didn't sour the match for me. It was just one of those moments. I'm just like meh. I could probably do without this. Uh, to me, it doesn't make it more special when the band comes out. I think it's whenever they do this, and WWE has done this a lot for this WrestleMania. They bring in the bands or whoever um, to <coughs> to sing the entrance music for the particular performer. And to, to, as as like from home, the viewer, and this is just me. I don't find it that much more uh, of a added value to their entrance. I think it's more for the talent that feel it's really cool that they have the band coming in to sing their song or, or whatever to the, I think it's more talent driven than it is for the, the actual fans that act, that care about it. I don't, to me, I like the song as it is. It's not going to get better live. Very few songs, especially wrestling entrance songs get better live, at least maybe because we're used to hearing it one way. And I don't like when live bands do it 
I mean, I don't, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But uh, did you did you, uh, you like you said you'd rather have, have a radio edit than the actual band come back? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, for that for that specific song, uh, I, I think there's audio problems because there's no way it was supposed to sound like that. In my in my personal opinion, I, I just don't I don't feel like it was supposed to sound like that. No. Um, but uh, I will say that they, they've had some good live songs before, like. I remember when Alistair Black had that amazing live song when they're rocking out, um, you know, off the poppy on NXT. He's doing an unbelievable job with Io Shirai there. So, you know, I, I feel like it could it could work. It's just that that time it didn't oh, Shinsuke work. Shinsuke Nakamura did too. I forgot about oh, that. Oh, yeah, Nakamura. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, like, that's right. It, it does. Like, there are ways to enhance. It's just it didn't work. I, I just I feel like it didn't it didn't work for whatever reason. Um, as for the match, um, okay, so, like, it was a good match. Uh it was not one of the stronger matches at WrestleMania. Like, I would probably give it a C plus, maybe a low B. Um, and this is coming from, like, probably the biggest Rhea Ripley fan on YouTube. And mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, uh, like, or on YouTube, but in the, maybe in the world. Like, I'm I'm a huge Rhea Ripley fan. I think she's just an immensely talented uh, female. And uh, I, I thought it was an okay match. Uh, I didn't actually see a lot of chemistry between the two. And Rhea Ripley was trying to be a heel, like, really extra heel. And I don't think they went like that at all on the storyline. Like she's supposed to be a heel, so why is she acting like such a you know B I T C H? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. for no for no reason. I guess they're trying to make a heel you know non heel situation there for just for the match. I guess, but the crowd wasn't like kind of digging it either because they kind of wanted to cheer Rhea, but she was being kind of like a dick. So mm-hmm. it was it was confusing. Uh, I didn't see much chemistry between the two, but I thought they they performed really well. Like, I don't feel like they had any like really mistakes. I thought there was a nice DDT on the apron there, which was really nice. The armbar was really nice. Uh, there was a nice counter with the Oscar lock into the pin. You know, Oscar had to break the pin, and then seconds later, you know, the Riptide was hit, which was nice. I love that little ending finish. But at the end of the day. I think what people are going to remember about this WrestleMania and and not just this match, but like is the fact that they're giving these young ladies an opportunity to shine in the company. And I think that's so important um, because, you know, it's about time. It's about time you, you, you put in that investment into these female wrestlers because they are, there's a lot of talent in that locker room and they deserve it. So uh, I, I like the finish. I just wasn't the biggest fan of the match overall. Yeah, I think that's how most fans feel. I, I tweeted this out too. I said, "Good match, good result, good booking." I said, "But why do I still feel like I'm underwhelmed?" And I, I think that it, that's I, I believe that that's how most fans generally feel. You may have some people that hate it, some people that thought it was the best thing ever. But especially the problem is that you you take this and your mind immediately compares this to you know Bianca Belair and Sasha Banks that put in an absolute classic the night before. You know, it, it it's really hard to, again, when you set the bar so damn high, your mind now has the bar that high and, and, you know, subconsciously you're judging it against that even if you don't think you are. So there's that working against it and the fact that, yeah, they didn't have a whole lot of chemistry. Um, they, they're great individual performers and they were the moves are just fine, but there's that intangible chemistry and I didn't really feel a whole bunch of it like you. Uh, And maybe that's also what was missing. But, uh, you know, again, no complaints on the actual the match itself. It just it it didn't have that it factor. It didn't have that chemistry. Uh, Rhea Ripley winning, I think, was extremely predictable. That's not bad. Predictability is fine if it makes sense. And Rhea Ripley uh, having the women's championship, the raw women's championship, finally making that belt feel like. Is it's relevant again after being hidden with Oscar for six months, which is really inexcusable, as I've said. Uh, Rhea Ripley is going to bring relevancy back to this championship. She's going to bring add, add value to the championship. I think she's going to have whole new a whole new uh, cast of women to work with. If she's going to stay heel, we'll see. Uh, then, yeah, she does have a lot of women to work with. Um, I think what I'll take away from this match is beyond Rhea Ripley winning is how much stuff kept falling off of their uh, outfits. I mean, Rhea Ripley's like chains were yeah. coming off, like all I these, that they too, were like actually. disintegrating and I'm like, Oh boy, you know, it just kept happening. So, yeah. Hey, know. no sneaking peeks, my friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was on her pants. I mean, it was on yes. her thigh. Oh, so yes. it wasn't okay. in an area that, that you know, the, that could be uh, jeopardized. So, uh, uh, yeah, it but, was. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, you know, the I, 
Rhea Ripley, like, I guess she's going to be a full-time heel now. So I'm just trying to think, like, who who do you think that is going to be her next opponent, opponent now? Like, well, is I, this the rematch at WrestleMania rematch again? or uh, So Asuka is probably going to be the first up. I think Asuka is going to be in that backlash, um, uh, the, the backlash match. Uh, I think she's probably going to be there. I mean, outside of that, when you look at the roster, uh, you know, you do have some – women that are in tag teams that you could break up. I mean, Shayna Baszler, although she's also a heel, I mean, maybe she doesn't uh, immediately go for Rhea Ripley. And, you know, I, I just can't believe the Rhea Ripley or um, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are still together. I figured that they would go and be separate already and break up at Mania. But, yeah, I mean, outside of doing a shakeup or maybe bringing in some new NXT talent, it's, uh, it's you know, there, there's a roster there, but the, the problem is a lot of them are heels, and I don't know if you can work with the heels when she's a heel. So either you do a flip tomorrow night and have her be babyface, or I, I don't know. Uh, it's it, it's a interesting it's an interesting dynamic because you also have a lot of women that have never gotten an opportunity. Mandy Rose, for example. I mean, you have Mandy Rose, Lana, of course. But uh, I don't know. Maybe they could do a tournament. Maybe they could get a multi woman match. What, what do you think? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Usually I always have an answer for something, but I I really don't know what they're going to do. Like, even though the, the rosters, you know, there's a lot of talent to the young ladies. None of them have been booked to be strong enough to, you know, have that opportunity to go out and kind of perform at that level uh, against a guy, a girl like Rio Ripley. Cause she, you could tell she was refined. Like, even though the match was like, no, a lot, a lot of chemistry, the two, like you could tell she is so talented, like her, the way she wrestles. Mm. Uh, she really is just an incredibly talented individual. And I, I don't feel like there's anybody right now, like as of right this second on this roster that really deserves that opportunity against her, except for, I guess, an Oscar, right? But, Becky Lynch. You know, Becky Lynch could put talk yeah. now. <laughs> but like, I, like the, but see, like it's a missed opportunity, right? Because if if Becky Lynch was saying it's going to come back, right? Why the hell wouldn't Asuka win then, right? And then you yeah. have Asuka versus Becky in, a, in such an obvious storyline because of the whole, you know, her giving their giving up the title, right? Like it just right. it writes itself, right? So I guess now, I guess it makes more sense having a heel versus a face if Becky Lynch does come back. But then why? Becky's going to come back and lose? No, she's going to come back and destroy Rio, Rio Ripley in like five seconds, right? Like, So it's just I, I don't want to see that because I don't want to see Becky Lynch just completely demolish Rhea in their first match back. It's, Plus, it's, that's what will happen. Exactly. The, the timing would be weird while people would get buzzing. Number one, the WrestleMania fans would be like, hey, what the hell? You guys couldn't do it the night that I paid like a thousand bucks to be here? Um, and you would do it at Mania instead of the night after when no one's there except screen boards? Um, it, it, so there is that, and the timing would be weird. And you also have to think about when WrestleMania uh, championship changes happen. I, typically, WWE, and I agree with this, has a, a standing rule of holding that championship for whoever just won it for like a six month period of time, usually through SummerSlam. Um, that is typically the, the the time frame because you want those those decisions and those title changes at WrestleMania to stick and, and to, to hold value and to make, you know, make, make it important, make it feel like it actually had impact on the storylines moving forward, not just play hot potato. So the, the championship changes that happen at WrestleMania typically stick around for a while, which tells me that Rhea Ripley is probably going to be champion through minimum SummerSlam, probably into the fall is, is my guess until maybe Becky Lynch comes back. Maybe perhaps she goes through everyone on the roster and then Becky Lynch's music hits, you know, in late summer or towards SummerSlam. And that's when we get it. But yeah, well, that's, that's the most logical thing with Becky Lynch or Becky Lynch goes and goes after the other title, right? Which is being held by uh, Bianca Belair, right? You could have Bianca as a heel and Becky Lynch uh, as, as the face there. So that, that, that could work, if I guess. Shake up. Yeah. Yeah, you, but, like, you but like I guess like why would Bianca be a heel now after she just had her yeah. big moment? I guess you could, but you could do like a cocky angle, like oh look at me, it's so easy, you know. I just came to the WWE and all of a sudden I win the title, like this is a joke. Like you can do some, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, you could do some, you could do some sort of storyline with that with Bianca, but like I don't think people will be happy about that either. I don't know, man. Yeah, like, they're, they're, this they're, is. Like, what are, I don't know. I'm actually curious what they're gonna do tomorrow. I'm, 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 I'm curious what they're gonna do. They've got a blank Shh. slate, like you said. Like the, the, there is no obvious. Oh, they're going right to this outside of a rematch with Asuka. I'm talking about her next real 
uh, opponent that she can get into a program with for a couple of months. I don't know who that is, which tells me either they're doing a shakeup, they're bringing up somebody new, uh, or a big return. I, I, rumblings of, I'm hearing rumblings of Ronda Rousey, although, I mean, come on. We just passed Mania. If any of that's going to happen, <laughs> I mean, it's got to be, you know, major, major pay-per-view SummerSlam WrestleMania again next year in Dallas. We'll see. But, um, okay, I want to I want to talk about the main event here because there is a lot to discuss in terms of uh, the, the ins and outs of this match and the outcome. And um, first of all, let me just say, I loved this match. I thought it was... It was really well done. Um, were there some co- questionable moments, as you pointed out on your video there on your on your channel? <laughs> yeah, uh, you you brought up a very interesting point about the double pin. So uh, I don't know. You, you can talk about that now, or or uh, anything else yeah, regarding sh- this match. Yeah, sure. Like, I guess I can get to it. I, I, well, I, I eventually I did say that it was the right thing. So. The reason why people like a lot of people were confused. I got a lot of messages about this. Oh, did Edge win? <laughs> because mm-hmm. because technically he was on top of Daniel Bryan and and Re- Roman Reigns was on top of both of them. Well, the rule states uh, basically if both shoulders are down from both competitors, then the person pinning is the is the person who gets the the win. So uh, they did a right great job. Thank God it wasn't botched, right? Because if that was botched. Well then, then you know people can really have that conversation, right? But it wasn't. It wasn't. They the shoulders were clearly down for both. I thought they even like you can see Edge was like extra putting his thing down, like because he's like, okay, I can't mess this up, right? Uh, because they probably obviously talked about it. They probably said, listen, you cannot like this is a tough double pin, so you, you have to do it perfectly. So they did. So as for the match, just. It was a great ending to a great WrestleMania with a lot of good balance across the entire show. Like, I thought it was great. I I thought they made all three characters look very strong. Um, You know, the the beginning, the first half of the match was like pretty normal. Like, I didn't say there wasn't anything too special except for the fact that it was it was high paced, right? Like the big suicide dive there and all the super kick with Jey Usos and all that stuff, like getting him involved early, I thought was a good idea. You know, obviously Daniel Bryan, I, I, the, the spot I really liked was when the chair kind of broke. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I don't, I still think I'm, I, for some reason, I think this was done. Uh, act Like, I don't think this was planned. I think this is kind of something that they, it, it just kind of happened. And, uh, it, it, and then they played off of it. Because like when Edge's face was hilarious, because when when he dropped that or that chair dropped, like you could see Edge's face, like oh what do I do? Oh screw it, let's just continue. And then when they did the the submission spot, like you could see that he's like oh maybe I can just grab the the thing and use the thing as a submission, like to make it look stronger. So I'm curious, what what do you think? Was it planned the the chair breaking? And using it as a weapon, or do you think it wasn't planned? Yeah, uh, that's that is tough. If, if I was going to be a betting man, I would, I, I would say that it, you know, it, it was probably planned. Uh, I wouldn't bet a, I wouldn't bet anything on it. Uh, I see your point. Uh, the only, the, again, the way I say it's not planned is they had a gimmick, gimmicked chair. And uh, that it was supposed to do that. And then because the visual of that and for that that exact piece of the chair to be there for Edge to do that, the odds are very slim. I mean, that's true. you know, like it, in the visual of it and he can actually use a piece of the chair that's safe. So my, my guess is it probably was planned, uh, but or they just had the, the wrestling gods. Uh, I'm not talking about JBL. I'm talking about the mythical wrestling gods just <laughs> play a part in this and it landed perfectly. I mean, there's also that chance. So I, I don't think it was planned, but I see your point. Yeah. It's tough. Like, it, but it's good. It's well done enough that people don't really know. Right. Like I'm, I don't really know. You don't really know. So that's good. Right. Like if, yep. if we don't really know, that means whatever happened was well done. Right. So that's, that's really nice. Uh, so I did like that spot. Uh, the double concertos uh, or setting up double concertos, getting Daniel Bryan kind of out of it. Uh, made sense, you know, hitting one. And because Roman Reigns, you know, did pick up the victory and how, and he, he, he double pinned, right? Like this was, when you double pin someone, that's like, that is, that is the equivalent of saying, listen, I am by far the top dog in this company. This is, I just took out Daniel Bryan and Edge in a triple threat match, getting double pinned. 
Like I am, I am the guy, no doubt in my mind. And I think they made him look so strong, which makes me think, okay, now no one's talking about Roman. Like who could who matches up against Roman now, right? Like there's no yeah, one, nobody. So you know who, you know who's coming. Uh, he's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. Vince is already tickling his fancy. He's really mm-hmm. happy. Uh, I think it's happening. Uh, I think maybe even as close as tomorrow. I think Brock Lesnar shows up and, wow. or yeah. sorry, on SmackDown. Sorry, uh, Brock Brock Lesnar shows up and there you have it. Brock Lesnar versus uh, Roman Reigns. I can I can definitely see it. I fully expected to hear his music at the end of the night. Yes, Roman. Me would too. Have, you know, I, too. I was waiting yeah. because I was like, okay, Vince loves to put smiles on people's faces. He's infamous for that, especially in the main events of WrestleMania. It's the lasting image. Do you really want Roman Reigns to be the lasting image holding the championship where people are pissed? And he's holding it. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm like waiting for his music to hit. And it never did. It never did. Uh, it was just Roman holding the championship, which look uh, as a fan, as like a kind of a baby face fan, I like, I would like edge to win. I'm a big edge fan. Yeah. The synchronicity synchronicity of him exactly 10 years to the day, giving up the championship, winning it back, even though it's not the world heavyweight championship, whatever. It's still the world title, I guess is what they're, they're using it as, uh, I was, you know, I, I wanted edge to win it, but at the same time, my wrestling brain, I was like, no, Roman needs to win this because you don't get a heel like Roman Reigns very often. They are few and far between. And I'm glad the audience in attendance didn't do the the uh, the, the the opposite or or the uh, just just to be cool, right? They didn't just yeah. they didn't try to cheer him. They booed him. They gave him the response that was necessary and the respect he deserved to get booed. Um, so I like that the crowd didn't just do you know the opposite to try to be cool or to just do the uh, the, the rebellious thing. Um, I, you know, as far as the rest of the guys, Edge and Daniel Bryan, I loved when they did the uh, double submission on Roman Reigns that spot. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And when I did that, I mean, they put that on. I'm like, oh no, Roman's going to tap somehow. He'll say he quits. Then then they're going to go on this this um you know the, this long standing. A storyline where who's champion, right? Like the vacant, the champion's vacant. So then what, right? Like that's what I thought. Roman would lose, but to who? And that's, you know, so I was thinking about that. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny because I never, like I thought that like, it could potentially end there, but I never thought like I could definitely see Vince McMahon like doing something like that, right? Oh, I guess we still don't know, right? On to, you know, yep. WrestleMania oh, he's done backlash. Right? Yeah. Yeah, WrestleMania backlash. Oh, my God. That's that's. <laughs> That's the more you biggest. say, it, I'm trying to like, I'm thinking maybe the more you say it, the more I'll get used to it and think it's, oh, okay, I can kind of get that. No, <laughs> it, it's getting worse. Uh, it's, it's just getting worse. But, uh, man, oh, oh, man. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know with a lot of things that things that happen with this company, but like they got, they got this WrestleMania night and one and night two completely right. Like, they really did a great job. They, they, they read, a, ri- a nice show, and of course, you know, the wrestlers, the performers really went out and did an incredible job. And the fact that it was pissing rain and they still pulled it off, I think it just really goes to show you how good the talent is in the WWE. So I was very, very much impressed. Um, I, would, I would give that WrestleMania a solid, you know, combining both nights together, a solid like 8.75 out of 10. Like I thought I was very pleased and satisfied. Um, the only thing that we didn't have was a big return. So, no, I I quite enjoyed I quite enjoyed WrestleMania. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you as far as I'm. I'm going to give it a letter grade. I'd give it a B plus. Um, yeah, you know, B B plus territory. I I wouldn't put it into the A category just because, as you said, we are so conditioned for that massive moment. And there's yes, there are lots of big moments, but there's. There's none that are like that that defining WrestleMania moment. If anyone's asking what I'm talking about, I'd, it'd be like the Daniel Bryan win at 30, or rather the Undertaker's streak being broken at WrestleMania 30. Uh, something like that. Now, obviously, there's legendary talent, and we know that, but something along those lines. Um, and we didn't have that, but it's okay. I mean, it's still, they still pulled off a really good WrestleMania, and it proves they don't need that talent of yesteryear to have a great, great WrestleMania, and including Hulk Hogan. And we didn't even talk about Bailey, right? I mean, like Bailey uh, comes out, and, and we have, you know, she interrupted Hulk Hogan and Titus O'Neil, who were dressed as pirates. Uh, you know, I, I don't know, whatever. You th- I think that was kind of dumb. Uh, but then, you know, Bailey comes out and she's doing her ding dong thing. And, you know, then the Bellas come out of nowhere 
and they lay her out, uh, of which, you know, I, I don't know if you listened to the Hall of Fame. I think you did. They're, they pumped in one more match chance for the Bellas. I'm like, no, the, nobody's asking for one more match from the Bellas. I, I don't know one person that wants another Bellas match. So, Wait, they're. Wait, I didn't hear that at all. I oh, heard yeah. booing. I heard booing from the crowd. Oh no! From... no during the Hall of Fame. Oh, during the during Hall, the Hall of, Fame, of Fame, they pumped in one more match chance oh, for the God. Bellas. It's a, hey, it's a be, joke. That would that'd be great for my channel, though. They last time they had a couple <laughs> matches didn't go so well, but <laughs> yeah. hey, you know what? The, the Bella Twins are, I, I think, pretty famous. To be honest, oh, and, they are. Yeah, and yeah. Be, because you know, my wife, I I, I told the story, and I'll say it quickly. Like I told, I asked my wife, I'm like, can you name like three three like, wrestlers and or three people in the WWE that you know? And they said, you know, Brie Bella, Nikki Bella, and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. So, like it was pretty easy. Oh, they. She also said uh, D- uh, the Rock. So I or Dwayne Johnson. So I'm like, okay, you got all the casual fans. Uh, re- yeah, really exactly. upset or really happy right now. Yeah. Like, basically. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, um, so I don't know. It's it's a great night, a great week of wrestling, and I'm really curious. Tomorrow it continues. One more night, I guess NXT as well on on Tuesday. I think it's going to be a huge NXT too because I have a feeling they're going to be setting up a monster. Finn Balor's going demon on Tuesday. I'm telling you, it's happening. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I don't know if he's going demon, but they're gonna. He's gonna be like, you know what? I'm. It's good. They're gonna hint that it's demon versus uh, Carrion, and I think that will be just a banger of the next takeover. I, I think that's what's that's what they're gonna do. What scares me is every time you make predictions on this show, and I I yeah, say no, crazy. they happen. So I'm gonna say yes. They probably will. I, you well, get... How else would you continue that feud? The carry comes out. He, he did an unbelievable job. Like that is that is the perfect follow up. Like okay, you can I can, I can beat Finn Balor, but can you beat the Demon? Right? And I haven't seen the Demon in a long time. How long so it's been? It's... How long? Like I don't even know. I don't even know the last time I saw a Demon. Well, they want people to forget about it because they want to bring him out once in a blue moon, which is they should have done at the beginning, right? It right. should have been a spectacle, right? Uh, no, not like the Fiend. No offense, but like he's just becoming. They did some massive damage to the Fiend tonight. I'll say that big damage. Uh, they, they better come out and say that was Bo Dallas. Okay, Bo Dallas. Yeah, his brother. Yeah, no leaving it. Okay, it was it was Michael McGillicuddy. Yeah, I mean, I I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Randy Orton did not go all zombie and do some zombie gimmick and you know join some stable with the Fiend and Alexa. I thought that would have been such a good way to start continue off the storyline. But there's oh, like a well. hundred other ways to go that would have been fine. And they they chose like the one out of the hundred that people are going to go. What the f? What what what, what was this? Um, and, and I don't think people are, you know, looking at this going. Oh, there's so many questions I want answered. They're looking at this going. We waited four months for this at WrestleMania, right? So uh, worth hey, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, listen, Bodge guy, it's been it's been awesome. Uh, did you have any final thoughts? I, I, I know that obviously you said you have a YouTube channel, so uh, remind our listeners where they can find that as well and uh, any other wrap up WrestleMania thoughts. Yeah, onlyfans dot com. No, I'm just playing. Oh, uh, only yes. fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what so, I would do. I, I don't know some if serious I... <laughs> nip slips there from me for sure, yeah. for sure, guys. Uh, no, uh, just just guys, uh, everybody that's listening here. I know it's a pain in the ass, you know, having to get off your lovely lovely couch or computer that you're doing it but take a couple of seconds out of your life uh, to support me and my family here and just go to my youtube channel and and leave a sub and go enjoy the live streams and stuff that we do together because we we have an amazing community over there and uh matt's definitely a part of it here and uh he he's been there he's uh he he can account to what i'm saying right matt oh no i I was watching you doing your weather updates today (laughs) yes (laughs) yes and just head over there and leave me a sub guys i would i would highly appreciate it and trust me if if you go over there and leave a sub and and you mention that you're from the podcast or you leave a little avocado or something i'll i'll definitely give you an extra shout out on there as well just so i can see it with my own eyes all right guys so uh yeah thank you matt for having me once again right we're almost done here with WrestleMania, I guess. Well, we have WrestleMania Backlash coming up, so I guess Stop we're not it. done with WrestleMania. <laughs> I can't handle that name, but yes. <laughs> God dang. Okay, yeah. Uh, but all right, we'll have also, guys, we'll we'll get the other hashtag trending. Hashtag get botch guy to 70K, right? So, uh, oh, yeah. That's uh, nice. We're close. 200 and, or 305 or something left. Oh, oh, we're, we're, 
it, it's it's right there. It's right there. So almost a th- I will say this: we we almost had a thousand subs this WrestleMania week. Which wow! Is insane. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, good for you. That's awesome. Uh, so I'll lose all the thousand next month when they all like, okay, well, WrestleMania. yeah, see, that's just it. You got to try to like keep these people right that come in for WrestleMania, poke their head in and they're, you know, then they go back out. So it's okay. I'll yeah. make sure you pop up from time to time. And they're like, oh my God, Matt, Matt comes here. Okay. I'll make sure. Yeah. Make sure I keep them subbed here. <laughs> yeah. I'm the one that has credibility. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. But uh, all right. Well, thanks so much, Botch Guy. Uh, we'll be back together for Backlash on uh, May 16th in, in in five weeks. So looking forward to it. WrestleMania backlash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> bye, bye. All right, bye.